Have you ever felt like electrical schematics are just too complicated to understand and only meant to be understood by a chosen few? But what if I told you that mastering these electrical blueprints isn't actually that difficult and is the foundation to all other advanced roles in electrical control and automation? Now I know the first step is always the biggest step and always seems the most daunting, but with some dedicated time spent learning these schematics in the right areas, it really doesn't make it that difficult or take too much time. And I'm gonna share with you the three pivotal reasons why getting comfortable with electrical schematics isn't just a good start, but it's actually a must for anyone looking to crack the code of electrical control and automation. And these are all based off my own experiences working as an engineer in the three main industries of control and automation, that being smart home, BMS, and industrial controls. This is the first step that I recommend individuals and businesses take when they're starting on the path to becoming a well-rounded and capable, confident engineer able to deliver full systems across any of these industries. And if you ever wanted a detailed training in how to read electrical schematics, then make sure you click the link in the description and I'll send you over a free video training and workbook for you to download and work through. So the first thing to point out is that this skill set, understanding electrical schematics, really is the foundation moving forward for any skill set to build upon if you want to get started in electrical controls and automation. Because what it does is it builds a true bird's eye conceptual understanding of the control system as a whole, giving you a big picture overview of that control and automation system. And this can all be achieved just from flicking through some diagrams on some pieces of paper. Because without this foundation, you can't really expect to confidently and competently move on from here. So for example, if you then wanted to get into the building and wiring of control panels, or the commissioning and the testing and the fault finding, or even the design, you can't get into the how or the why if you don't have the what. And this is really what this stage focuses on, the what. And the next key thing to talk about is that you don't need a fully functioning live control system in front of you to understand how they work, because you can do that through just learning how to read and interpret electrical schematics. So really all you need is those schematics and ideally some images to, to reference to. So it's very low cost and it's very easy and accessible for anyone to start learning how to read and understand them. So for people that aren't in the industry or don't have the opportunity to shadow or work with anyone in the industry or don't have a live system perhaps at their home or place of work, this fundamental and foundational understanding can be built without needing anything like that. And what I used to do when I was starting out, now I was lucky enough to at least be able to get onto different sites, but what I used to do is I would get onto a site and this was for another system, but I would see BMS panels on site and I was very interested in them at the time. So what I would do is I would take pictures of the panel outside and providing I could open up the panel without switching off the system because they were always live functioning systems. So I worked out a way how to get into the control panel without switching it off. And what I did was I would open up the panel, I'd take multiple pictures on my mobile phone, I'd take pictures of the matching schematics again with my mobile phone. And then when I got back home where there isn't the pressures of sight and time and having to get things fixed for the actual reason that you're there, and when I had some spare time and got home, I was able to then go through the images of the system and reference the schematics and then go back from the schematics to the system and where things would be labeled, you could reference the, the labels in the diagrams to the labels in the actual panel with the physical items. It's a really good way to start to understand how schematics work and what all the different components are and what they do. So that's what I used to do, but again, like I mentioned, not everyone has that opportunity. So if you don't have that opportunity, what I'd recommend you do is you click the link in the description and we'll send you everything you need to know 
so you can do exactly the things that I've just mentioned. We send you schematics and we send you matching photos for you to do that. Now, the final thing I want to talk about relating to electrical system schematics, and that is that it is critical for fault finding. And fault finding is such a valuable skill that I don't think people realize how valuable this skill is, especially the people that have the skill that aren't necessarily business owners. But if you think about it from a business owner's perspective, and you're an engineer working for this business owner who's got a very good skill set in fault finding, imagine that you've been sent to site because your business that you work for, its client system has gone down, and you're on site and you've got to get this system up and running very quickly. And let's say that it's a manufacturing plant. And at the moment, they're not able to manufacture anything because the system's down. And they're ultimately, when they're not producing, they're not making any money. So they're now relying on an engineer to come to site and to get their system back up and running as quickly as possible. And the quicker, the better, because it means that they lose less money. So just think about that for a second. The better you are at fault finding and quickly rectifying issues, has a direct correlation to the value that you bring to that business that's got an issue and isn't up and running. And then that value translates then back to the business that you work for and the value that you provide to your boss. And ultimately, the more valuable you are to a business owner, the more that they're going to want to keep you as part of their business, which means when you do want to ask for a pay rise or you do want to go down a different route within that business or you want to do something else, they're far more likely to negotiate or give you the things that you want because of how valuable you are to that business. So ultimately it gives you huge amounts of leverage having a skill like being able to fault find quickly. But without understanding electrical schematics, you're never going to get to that stage because you need that conceptual bird's eye understanding of systems, even if you don't have schematics on site to work through, because all systems are fundamentally the same and you understand that from a conceptual level, you're, you're able to then fault find quickly, whether you have the schematics or not. But you're never gonna have that conceptual understanding unless you've been through the schematics and you understand them. So hopefully this video has illustrated why I think it's important for anyone, but certainly beginners to get started with electrical schematics. And you can see the type of value that can be provided by people who do understand electrical schematics. And then off the back of that can be effective fault finders and also see that it's the foundation for other things like panel building, panel design, commissioning, etc. And like I mentioned, if you want any help with understanding electrical schematics, click the link in the description below and we get you started with some free training, free schematics, free images, and get you on the path to becoming a well-rounded and efficient engineer in controls and automation. I'll see you on the next video.